taste of the real world I got battered on the North Shore It gave me comfort when I always knew that I always knew that you were there for me next door I lived it hard on the long road I ran through every single zip code I get lonely but I always knew that I always knew that your heart I could call home how are you doing math learners this is your free access youtube educator math teacher ash and welcome to math learning with sir ash for today's lesson we are going to discuss a review series for our grade 9 students in preparation for their third quarter examination so in this video you will be given series of questions and we will try to answer them so that you can understand how to solve and how to answer problems relating to the competencies in the third quarter so let us go in our first question all right here is the first question a parallelogram that has four equal sides and four right angles so what do you call that one is it a rectangle b square c kite or d rhombus okay so we have 10 seconds to answer And for that question, my dear math learners, the correct answer is letter, all right, letter B, square. Why? Because by definition, a square has four equal sides and four right angles. If it is only focused on four equal sides, then that is what we call a rhombus. Otherwise, if it is also focused on four right angles, that is called a rectangle. But if we combine them together, four equal sides and four right angles you have a square all right so now let us go to question number two which of the following statements is always true one all squares all square is a rectangle two all rhombus is a rectangle three all rectangle is a square or four any two opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel is it a two and three is it b two and four is it c one and three or is it d one and four so we have our 10 seconds okay math learners so in this question we will be trying to find the true statements among the four given statements so let's try to check um all square is a rectangle is that correct yes that is correct all rhombus is a rectangle no that is not because um rhombus is not under a rectangle three all rectangle is a square not always okay and number four, any two opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. Yes, that is correct because opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. So among the four statements, only question one and question uh, only statement one and statement four are the correct statements. So one and four, that would be letter D. Let's check our answers. All right. So you got the correct answer, my dear math learners. Now, question number three. What is the area of the rectangle whose length is 20 cm and whose width is 25 cm? Is it A, 425 square centimeter, B, 500 square centimeter, C, 350 square centimeter, or letter D, 245 square centimeter? Okay, this question is very easy, my dear math learners, as long as you remember the formula for the area of a rectangle. And what is the area of the rectangle? That is length times width. So the length is 20, the width is 25. So just multiplying 20 times 25, you get the correct answer. Okay, so what is the result? Multiplying 20 and 25, I think that would be 10 times 25, that would be 500. Okay, is it letter B? all right so you got the correct answer now let us go to question number four the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid are represented by 6x minus 29 and 4x plus 15. now the question is what is the value of x is it a 44 b 7 c 22 or d 34 
Okay, my dear math learners, remember the property of an isosceles trapezoid that diagonals are congruent. So basically, if you have two diagonals of a of an isosceles trapezoid and the, this represents the 6x minus 29 and 4x plus 15 respectively, you can equate the two expression giving you 6x minus 29 uh, equals 4x plus 15. So by transposing the variables in the left side and transposing all the constant in the right side, you have the 6x minus 4x for the left side and that is result of 2x. And then in the right side, you have um, 15 plus 29. And if you add 15 plus 29, the answer is 44. However, you need to divide the whole equation by 2 in order to cancel the 2 in 2x. And the final answer would be letter C, 22. So let's check our answer if we are correct. All right. So we have the correct answer for this question. Easy, right? So now let us go to the next problem. A standard high school basketball court is 84 feet long and 50 feet wide. If a player will run from one corner to its opposite following the diagonal of the, of the court, how far will he run? Okay, is it A, 75 feet, B, 98 feet, C, 104 feet, or letter D, 124 feet? So my dear math learners, the first given here is that it says that it is a basketball court. And what is the shape of a basketball court? That is a rectangle, right? So having a rectangle, you have the length and the width. And if you run to the diagonal of that given um, scenario, basically you have or you will be having a, a right triangle. So having a right triangle, you now have two legs that are 84 feet long and 50 feet wide. So just applying the Pythagorean theorem, my dear math learners, that a c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. You have c squared is equal to 84 squared plus 50 squared. And by simplifying 84 squared and 50 squared, then adding them and then getting the square root of the answer, basically, you will have the final answer as 10 to the 98 feet. Okay, so that is how you solve for this question my dear math learners okay i hope you are having a great time today so now let us go to the next question the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid are is it a supplementary b half of the sum of the bases c congruent or d none of the choices okay let's have our 10 second time for this question Okay, so basically, my dear math learner, if you have listened to what I have said earlier, that in an isosceles trapezoid, um, the diagonals are, very good, congruent, and that is letter C. All right, we got the correct answer, my dear math learners. Now, let us continue. From the diagram below, what property can be applied in proving that KJ and KL are equal? So, KJ, here is this one. KJ and KL, okay, and, and that of, there is T here, and that of JM is equal to LM. All right, so is it A, a kite is a quadrilateral with two distinct pairs of consecutive sides that are congruent. Um, B, diagonals of a kite are perpendicular. C, a kite has exactly one pair of opposite angles that are congruent. Or letter D, a diagonal of a kite bisect each of the non-congruent angles and the other diagonal. So let's time ourselves for this question. Okay, so my dear math learners, basically, as you can see, the given statements or what we need to prove here are the, um, the sides of the kite, right? So basically, among the given choices we can discard the choices that talks about diagonal so it is basically 
um, obvious that letter B and letter D are the wrong answers. So we only have A and C for this one. So let's consider A, a kite is a quadrilateral with two distinct pairs of consecutive sides that are congruent. So basically, that answers our situation. So letter A. Now, let's consider letter C. A kite has exactly one pair of opposite side, opposite angles that are congruent. So it talks about angles here and we are in, among our statement, it is not focus on angles instead it focuses on side so therefore our final answer should be a let's try to check whether we are correct okay so my dear math learners we are correct now continuing we have here the next problem the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid are represented by 4x minus 47 and 2x plus 31 what property of a trapezoid is applied in solving for the value of x is it a a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with only one pair or pairs of parallel sides. The, the median of a trapezoid is parallel to the bases and has a length equal to half the sum of the lengths of the bases. Letter C, the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. Or letter D, the opposite angles of an isosceles trapezoid are supplementary. Okay, 10 seconds. So, my dear math learners, for this question, it goes back to our given um, statement earlier that diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. So, basically, our final answer here is letter C. Okay, so that is very, very easy, my dear math learners. It doesn't mean that if you have an expression given, you need to solve it, okay? You just need to analyze the problem and consider what is asked in the problem. Okay, let's continue. The figure below is kite ABCD, all right? Is AB equal to BC? Okay, so that is the question. Is it A? No, because they are not corresponding angles. B? Yes, because they are corresponding angles. C? No, because they are not corresponding sides. Or D? Yes, because they are corresponding sides. Okay, now, consider my arrow in the given. So, basically, this is the kite, okay, ABCD. And then we have AB here, line segment AB or side AB, and side BC. All right. So basically, it talks about the sides. So therefore, um, A and B are wrong. Okay, so we only have C and D. So the question is, is AB equal to BC? And the correct answer is, of course, the answer is, yes, they are equal with each other. So our final answer here is letter D. Oh, okay. I forgot to to on my time. <laughs> All right. But we have the correct answer. That is letter D. All right. Now, let's continue. In a trapezoid A, B, C, D, where A, D is parallel to B, C. Where is A, D here? Okay. A, D here is parallel to B, C. The point X, right here, is the midpoint of A, B. And Y is the midpoint of D, C. All right. If XY is 27 centimeter and BC is 29 centimeter, find the length of AD. Is it A, 23 centimeters, B, 33 centimeters, C, 25 centimeters, or letter D, 29 centimeters? So, my dear math learners, it is very easy for this question. Why? Because if you have a trapezoid given and um, a median is, or uh, yeah, a median is being drawn to your figure that is parallel to both bases. Basically, the properties there, or the property being focus, focused there is um, when you add the two bases, the base one here, okay, let's check the arrow, the base one here and the base two here, if you add them and divide it by two, the final answer would be the measurement of the segment of your median. So basically, since here, um, one of the bases is unknown, so we just tend to multiply or we get twice the value of 27 and that is 54. Then you subtract it to 29. So 54 minus 29, the answer is letter C, 25. So let's check whether we are correct. All right. So we are correct, my dear math learners. All right. And that ends our first part of the discussion 
for our review in this quarter. All right. So let us go, my dear math learner. So question number one, which of the following means that two ratios are equal? Is it A, basic proportionality theorem, B, proportion, C, ratio, or letter D, zero theorem? Your 10 seconds starts now. Okay, my dear math learners, this question is very, very easy because the definition two ratios are equal is being owned by the term letter B, proportion. All right, so we are correct, my dear math learners. Second question, the ratio of the sides of the original triangle to its enlarged version is 1 is to 3. The enlarged triangle is expected to have... Is it A, sides that are twice as long as the original? B, an area that is twice as large as the original? Letter C, sides that are one-third the length of the original? Or fourth, letter D, angles that are twice the measurement of the original? Okay, so 10 seconds for this question. <clears throat> Okay, my dear math learners, the technique here is very, very simple. The given statement for our problem says that the ratio of the sides, so of the original to its enlarged version is um, 1 is to 3. So basically, the original uh, um, represents the 1 and the enlarged version is 3. Now, um, the focus here of this statement is the sides. So in our given statements or choices, the letter A and letter C talks about the sides. The letter B talks about the area. And letter D talks about the angle. So we can discard, obviously, our B and D. And we can have A and C as, as our choices. So in this given choice, of course, as what I said earlier, it is enlarged. So therefore, it is three times as much. And letter C says it is one third of the length. So letter C is wrong. And... The correct answer here is letter A. Okay, let's check whether we are correct. All right. Easy, my dear math learners, right? Now, let's go to the third question. An environmentalist plants a tree. He had to dig three feet deep for every five feet of tree height. Okay, so if you have a tree that is five feet long or five feet tall, you need to dig three feet deep. Okay, but there is a statement here. How deep should the environmentalist dig if the height of the tree is 25 feet? Okay, so is it A, 15 feet, B, 20 feet, C, 25 feet, or letter D, 30 feet? Okay, my dear math learners, as we know, the given in the statement is the real height of the tree is 25 feet. And you have the ratio 3 is to 5. 3 feet deep of digging for every 5 feet height. Okay, so if your height becomes 25, so... If you check and balance what happened to 5, why it became um, 25, it is multiplied by 5. So, of course, due to parallelism, we will also multiply our dip by 5. So, 3 times 5, the answer is 15. So, our correct answer here is 15. Let's check. All right. Easy, my dear math learners, right? Now, let's go to the next question. A square picture with a side of 6 cm is to be enlarged with a side of 12 centimeter. It means that the side here is doubled. Okay, which of the following is true? The new picture is 400% larger than the original one. The new picture is four times larger than the original one. The scale factor between the original and the enlarged picture is one is to four. Is it A, one only? B, one and two only? C, three only? Or letter D, 1, 2, and 3. 10 seconds starts now. Okay, math learners. For this question, as you can see, all of the statements are um, speaking the same idea, right? 400% um, larger means 400, 4 times as much. Okay? So basically, state, statement 1 and 2 has the same idea. Um, however, statement number three, we have here a scale factor of one is to four. 
that also mean that the original is four times as much as to the original at uh, the enlarged um, square picture so therefore the three ideas here are all the same so our final answer should be letter d okay one two and three let's check whether we are correct okay my dear math learners it is very easy of course for sure some of you may be asking um sir how come it become four or times four as much in which the side is six and it is doubled into 12 right so my dear math learners if you try to imagine if you have a one centimeter by one centimeter square so it means all of the square or all of the sides of the square is one centimeter and if you try to double it it will become two here and also it will also become two here okay so that gives you four squares of a one by one um, square so it means that it is multiplied by four <laughs> okay i hope that um, explains or that answers your inquiry now let's continue my dear math learners which of the following is or are true about proportion statement one the equality of two ratios statement two the product of the extremes is equal to the product of the means is it a one only b both one and two c two only or d neither one nor two okay 10 seconds for that question so we have here you just choose one of the two or both the two or neither of the two okay so my dear math learners basically we are trying to find the property and the definition of proportion so what do we mean by proportion it is the equality of two ratios so statement number one is already correct however we also know that by the law of proportion it says there that um, in a given proportion a is to b is equal to c is to d we can say that the two ratios are uh, equal if and only if the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes so therefore statement two also justifies the definition of proportion so therefore the correct answer here is both one and two let's check whether we are correct okay easy right now let's continue in the figure triangle abc is similar to okay so this is our figure my dear math learners is it a um, triangle bdc b triangle dbc c triangle cdb and d triangle cbd okay my dear math learners 10 seconds for that question basically um as you know you may be um, skeptical and of course um confused that however you name a triangle it is still the same as long as they are connected with each other but in terms of similarity it is very important that when one triangle is named by this kind of um, way you must um, also name the corresponding triangle in terms of that way so that they can be similar okay so let's check here we have here a triangle a b c so the focus here is the 53 degree angle right okay so how do we name the next one okay so of course since it starts from outside going inside and then its middle point so in naming this tri next triangle you also start from outside going inside then to the middle point so this the final answer could be triangle b b c so that is letter b so let's check whether we are correct okay we are correct my dear math learners so now let us continue given that a b c or triangle a b c is similar to triangle q or s which side of or which side is corresponding to side r s so this is the one Okay, which side is corresponding to this side? Okay. Is it A, um, side QS, B, side AB, C, side AC, or D, side BC? 10 seconds for that question. My dear math learners, just a tip that when you are naming corresponding sides or parts of a triangle, the technique there is the placement. Okay. 
So, if you are naming from this triangle, so the corresponding part there is on the next triangle. Okay, so since they are talking about the base here, the corresponding side of this one is also the base on another triangle. So, therefore, the final answer here is side BC, letter D. Let's check whether we are correct. Okay, we are correct, my dear math learner. So, now let us continue. Given the same figures, which angle is congruent to angle A? Okay, is it A? Angle B? B, angle Q? C, angle S? Or D, angle C? So, same concept that I have shared earlier, my dear math learners. In terms of angles, so you just check. Okay, so we are talking about angle A here. Okay, uh, where is my arrow? Okay, here. So, here it is, our angle A. So, it is at the top. So, therefore, in naming the corresponding angle for this is the top of the next angle. Okay, so uh, the next triangle. So, therefore, this is angle Q. Okay, so our answer is letter B. Okay, I forgot again my time limit. Okay, let's just check. All right, we are correct, my dear math learners. So, the answer is angle Q. I hope you are enjoying our review for this session. Next, we will continue. A rectangular garden is 45 feet wide and 70 feet long. On the blueprint, the width is 9 inches. What is the length on the blueprint? Okay. Is it A, 7 inches, B, 12 inches, C, 9 inches, or letter D, 14 inches? So, my dear math learners, the actual and the blueprint is being compared here. So, in the actual, we have 45 is to 70. So, 45 for width, 70 for length. So, in the blueprint, it says 9 inches for the width. So, if we check this statement, I hope, okay. Now, the 45 becomes 9. So, what happened to 45 Why it became 9? Basically, it is divided by 5. Okay, so that is also what we will do in order for us to know the length of the blueprint. Okay, so 70 divided by 5 is, I think the answer is 14. Okay, letter D. Let's check. All right. So, my dear math learners, we are correct. All right, math learners, we are here down to our third part of our review series. So, now let us go to the series of questions. Okay, question number one. Use the information in the diagram to determine the height of the tree. So, this is our diagram with the building on it. Is it A, 80 feet, B, 320 feet, C, 40 feet? And D, 160 feet. Okay. So, my dear math learners, in solving these kind of questions, you should first look at your diagram. So, let's consider this one. So, the problem here is what is the height of this tree? Now, if you observe, there is already the measurement of a certain point going to the top of the tree and this certain point to the base of the tree, right? So, basically, two measurements is already given. Now, somehow, um, it also says that the distance between the tree and the building is the same as the distance of the base in the certain point. And it also says that the top of the tree is the same distance as the top of the building. And the building is 160 feet. Now, um... This may be in application of the similarity of triangles. However, you can also discard this given here. Okay, this one, this 160 and these two given uh, tick marks. Why? Because if you consider this small triangle here with our height of the tree, it is an example of a right triangle and the hypotenuse and one leg is already given. So basically, you can apply the Pythagorean theorem. And we all know the Pythagorean theorem is equal to our, um, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the legs. So that is C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Now, uh, one of our legs here is missing and that is the height of the tree. So what we do here is we will get C squared, which is 144, so that is 144 squared minus 120 squared, which is this one. And then if you simplify the answer and then get 
the square root of that? The, the answer is approximately 80 feet. Okay, let's check. All right, we got the correct answer, my dear math learner. So just c squared minus a squared, and then square root of that, you will get your final answer on this question. Easy, right? Now let us go to the next question. Gwen scans a photo that is 4 inches wide and 6 inches long into her computer. If she scales the length down to 3 inches long, how wide should this, the similar photo be? Is it A, 3 inches, B, 2 inches, C, 4 inches, or letter D, 1 inch? Okay, so my dear math learners, as you can see here, we have our first given, first ratio. We have 4 is to 6, all right? Now, this 4 here represents the wide or the width, sorry, and the 6 inches here represent the length. Now, um, the second given says that it was length down or scaled down to 3 inches long. So, the length here becomes 3 inches long. So, from 6, it becomes 3. How did that happen? So, you can ask yourself. So, that is just by dividing 2. So, with the same concept, we will divide our 4 here by 2 and we will get the answer 2 inches. And that is letter B. Let's check whether we are correct. All right. So, very easy, my dear math learners. You just need to consider to analyze the problem. Third question, fill in the blanks. Two figures are said to be similar if the corresponding sides are blank and the corresponding angles are blank. Is it A, equal, equal, B, proportional, proportional, C, equal, proportional, or letter D, proportional, equal? Okay, my dear math learners, this is basically the definition or the concept given by the similarity of triangles. Now, in the similarity of triangles, you can say that two triangles are similar if and only if their sides are proportional and their angles are congruent. So, talking about sides, they should be proportional. And talking about angles, they should be equal. So, therefore, our answer should be letter D. Let's check. Okay, we are correct, my dear math learners. Now, let's go to the next question. Which of the following represents the statement? If an angle of one triangle is congruent to an angle of another triangle and the corresponding sides, including those angles, are in proportion, then the two, then the two triangles are similar. Is it A, SSS similarity, B, AA similarity, D, SAS similarity, or letter D, AAA similarity? Okay, my dear math learners, basically we have only three similarity theorems. Those are the SSS, AA, and SAS. There is no such thing as AAA similarity. So now, let's go back to our statement. It sets here an angle and the corresponding sides including that angle. So therefore, there are two sides and one angle being talked about. So if that is the case, then our answer should be letter C. Okay, let's check whether we are correct. Okay, we are correct. My dear math learners, easy, right? So now let us go to the next problem. Is triangle EDF and triangle BCA similar? Is it A? Yes, by AA similarity. Is it B? Yes, by AA similarity. Ah, okay. So there is a different way in naming the triangle here. Is it C? Yes, triangle EDF is similar to triangle BCA by ASA similarity or is it D? No, there is not enough information to determine similarity. Okay, my dear math learners, basically the, the statement itself is focusing on triangle EDF and BCA. So EDF and BCA. So in your um, choices, you should just focus on those triangles. So EDF, BCA, EDF, BCA. So there are two here, right? Okay, so somehow we could only choose from A and C. The question is, the question is, which among the two is the correct answer? Now, check our given. As we can see in our given, the focus there are two angles. So, angle and angle, angle and angle. Now, there is no tick marks or any tick mark that is being drawn for sides. So, therefore, we will be dealing with two angles. So, therefore, the correct answer is letter a. Okay, let's check whether we are correct. Okay, correct, my dear math learners. Now, let us go to the next question. Justify by triangle similarity theorem whether the triangles formed are similar 
and find the value of x. So this is the given diagram. Is it S? Uh, is it A? SSS five and one third. Is it B? AA thirteen and one third. Is it C? SAS thirteen and one third. Is it D? AA um, five and one third. Okay. Now, my dear math learners, the given here are all sides, right? And there are two sides given. There is no three sides, okay? So, there's, um, as we can see, let's check the arrow here. Okay. Now, there's no side here given. So, it is focused on two sides and two sides. So, basically, B and D is already the wrong answer. It could be A or C. Now, how do we determine that the correct answer is um five and one third or 13 and one third okay so my dear math learners you can apply the small over big here so six over ten six plus four ten okay so that is your first proportion then you have eight over x so six over ten is equal to eight over x you can just apply the cross multiplication um, having that you will have 80 over 6 or an 80 divided by 6 is 13 and 1 third so the correct answer here is 13 and 1 third okay so letter c however how the how did it happen as sas my dear math learners of course if we are considering this part two sides and this will be the included angle right another here is an another side and this side the included angle is here so basically it pertains the sas um theory or a theorem or similarity theorem okay so basically our answer here is letter c let's check whether we are correct all right so we are correct my dear math learners i hope you are enjoying our review series for today now let's continue in the given figure triangle srt is similar to triangle bac so s r t b a c all right find x and y is it a x is equal to 3 y is equal to 10 b x is 10 y is 3 c x is 5 y is 6 and d x is 6 y is 5 okay so how do we solve this my dear math learners the technique here is very simple you just need to consider first the pair with the correct uh, or with the complete given so as we can see here, we have here, uh, this side and this side, this is a complete pair, okay? So 4 and 6. And we can compare this one, 2 and x, because that is the corresponding sides, right? So 4 and 6, if you get the scale factor of 4 and 6 or 4 over 6, the answer is 2 thirds. So it is already given that this is 2. So therefore, our x here is 3. So therefore, the correct answer is letter A. So no need to solve for this one but um for um compliance purposes let's try to solve how did he get 10 for um let for y okay now you can also ask yourself here is a complete corresponding pair right four and two what happened to four why it became two it was divided by two so you just get six divided by two the answer is three that is how we get x is equal to three now for y we can go back to the reverse method or inverse method. So what will happen to 5 it, in order to become y, the bigger one? So of course, the bigger one is twice as much. So 5 times 2, that is 10. So therefore, 3 and 10 are the correct answers. Okay, letter A. Easy, right? Now, let us go to the next question. If the corresponding angles of two triangles are equal to each other, then we could say that A the triangles are congruent b the triangles are identical c wait c the triangles are similar or letter d the length of the triangle ah, the length of the corresponding sides are equal my dear math learners in this given statement the corresponding angles of two triangles are equal to each other so therefore there are three angles so a a a so basically um having that um similarity you just need at least two in order for it to become similar. So therefore, um, having three is automatically they are similar. Not just congruent, but similar. So therefore, the correct answer is letter C. 
Okay, we got the correct answer, my dear math learner. So now, let us go to the next question. Which similarity theorem is used to prove that two triangles below are similar? So is it A, SS similarity theorem, B, SAS similarity theorem, C, AA similar similarity theorem, or letter D, Pythagorean theorem? My dear math learners, this question is very, very easy because in the given figure, the tick marks are given. So we have one side, two side, or three side, then corresponding to three sides to another triangle. Therefore, there are three sides. So that is SSS, similarity theorem, letter A. Okay, we are correct, my dear math learners. I hope you can follow or you can still follow our discussion. Next, which of the following theorem proves that the square of the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the length of the legs? Is it A, SSS similarity theorem? B, SAS similarity theorem, C, AA similarity theorem, or D, Pythagorean theorem. Of course, my dear math learners, this definition is owned. If you have uh, listened to our discussion in question number one, um, if we are talking about hypotenuse and the sum of the squares of their legs, that is basically the Pythagorean theorem, letter D. All right. So, I hope that answers your inquiry about this question. Next. All right. We are finished with our third part of our discussion for the quarter three. Welcome to the last part of our discussion for quarter three examination review for our grade nine students. Question number one. Which of the following is correct if HOP is similar to POE? So, of course, it is expected that it is talking about um, triangles. So is it A, PO over HO is equal to EO over PO? B, HO over HO is equal to EO over PO? C, PO over HO is equal to HO over PO? Or letter D, HE over HO is equal to EO over PO? Okay, math learners, in order for you to answer this question, it is important for you to do some representation for your HOP and POE. So you can make two different um, triangles, and that goes like this. The triangle HPO and the triangle PEO. So by this kind of representation, you can now know directly who among these sides are corresponding? All right. So now, as you can see, HP and PE are corresponding sides. HO and PO are corresponding sides. PO and EO are corresponding sides. So for other people there, maybe you are hesitant that there are two letters that are identical to the other two points in another triangle. So of course, math learners, you don't need to be more specific about that as long as you are expected that there are two triangles talk about this um, kind of scenario. Okay, so let's check our choices. So we have here 8PO, that is this one, over HO. Okay, this one. Okay, so these two are being paired. So of course, in order for it to become equal to another pair, it should be EO and PO. All right, so... Choice number one is already correct. So, of course, math learners, if you have already found out what pair is the correct answer, then you can directly answer that given letter. So, our answer here is choice number one. Let's check whether we are correct. Alright, we are correct, my dear math learners. So, now let us go to question number two. Which of the following formula can be used to get the value of C in the statement below? A tree is 20 meters tall, okay, that is like this. Cast a shadow on the ground that is 30 meters long, so it is like this, the shadow, all right. How far is the tip of the tree from the tip of the shadow? Okay, here, so we are talking about the hypotenuse. Is it A, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, C, uh, C squared is equal to A squared times B squared. 
B C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared and D C is equal to A squared plus B squared. So, of course, basically this talks about how to solve the given situation by the application of Pythagorean theorem. So, of course, we already know our Pythagorean theorem has the formula C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Therefore, our answer for this given question is letter A. Alright, we got the correct answer, my dear math learner. So, now let us continue. How far is the base of the metal bar from the end of the piece of rope if a 10-meter piece of rope was stretched from the top of a 6-metal bar to the ground? Is it A, 10 meters, B, 8 meters, C, 5 meters, or letter D, 2 meters? Alright, so let's go back to our given. How far is the base of the metal bar from the end of the piece of the rope so we are talking about this one okay this part and then this will be our metal bar all right so the piece of the rope will be um, drawn like this okay so if this is the given so how far this is the unknown and then the end of the piece if a 10 piece of rope was stretched from the top of a six meter bar to the ground so this is the six meter bar and then this is the 10 meter rope. So this is the unknown here. Of course, basically this is a right triangle, my dear math learner. So therefore, what we will do is we will be using the Pythagorean theorem, but our unknown is one of the legs. So therefore, we will be using C squared minus A squared is equal to B squared. So our C here is the bigger um, number. That is 10 meters. So 10 squared minus 6 squared so that is 100 minus 36 and the answer is 64 you get the square root of 64 and you got the answer 8 meters okay letter b let's check all right we are correct my dear math learners easy right now let us go to the next question analyze the triangle edf and triangle bca which statement is true sides are not proportional b Triangle EDF is similar to triangle BAC by SSS similarity. Triangle letter C, triangle EDF is similar to triangle BCA by SSS similarity. Or letter D, triangle EDF is similar to triangle ABC by SSS similarity. Of course, this talks all about SSS similarity because three sides are given from one triangle to another triangle, my dear math learners. So therefore, we can just um, pair them by um, the SSS similarity. Now, let's check who among these are the pair. So, we have here 9, 8, and 10. So, uh, bigger, the small, and the biggest. So, we, which is the bigger here? So, this is the one, 27. The smaller and the biggest, okay, or the longest, sorry. So, now, we can say that our smallest, 8, it became 24. So, that is times 3. Our 9, the bigger or the longer was multiplied by 3, the answer is 27. Correct. They are proportional. And the last one, we have 10 times 3, that is 30. So, all of the given sides are proportional. So, letter A is wrong. So, we only have these three choices here. However, it is already given by the definition or the statement in our problem. Triangle EDF and triangle BCA. So EDF and BCA. Therefore, letter C is our correct answer. Okay, we are correct, my dear math learner. So now let us go to the next question. Which of the following best describes two similar triangles? Corresponding angles and sides are congruent. B, corresponding angles and sides are proportional. C, corresponding angles are proportional and corresponding sides are congruent. Or letter D, corresponding angles are congruent and corresponding sides are proportional. Okay, remember my dear math learners in our previous reviews that two triangles are similar if and only if the angles are congruent and the sides are proportional. So that answers our letter D statement. So let's check whether we are correct. Okay, we are correct my dear math learners. So now let us go to the next question. Chris is 6 feet tall, standing on the ground, casting a shadow of 4 feet. Okay, so 6 feet tall is Chris and his shadow is 4 feet. Okay, a lamppost casts a shadow of 16 feet. So this is the shadow of the lamppost. And then 
the question now is what proportion is correct to find the height of the lamp? Okay, this one. All right. So, is it A, 6 over 4 is equal to X over 16, B, 6 over 4 is equal to 6 plus X over 12, C, 4 over 6 is equal to X over 12, or letter D, 4 over 6 is equal to 12 over X plus 4. So, as you can see here, if we consider 6 and 4 here, the 6 is the height and then the shadow. So, remember, my dear math learners, in making proportion, you must always apply what is the first pairing. So, if the first pairing says height over shadow, then on the next pair, it should always be height over shadow. Okay, let's check letter A. Six feet tall, shadow is four feet. So, height over shadow. So, therefore, in order for the next, it should be the height of the post and the shadow of the post, which is 16. Okay, we already got the correct answer, and that is letter A. Let's check whether we are correct. All right, my dear math learners, we are correct on this question. Now, let us go to the next question. Which on the following, or which of the following is not true in the statement, triangle FRI is similar to triangle DAY? Is it A? Um... Angle R is congruent to angle A, B, angle Y is congruent to angle I, C, side FD is corresponding to side IY, or D, side FR is corresponding to side DA. Okay, now my dear math learners, the triangle is FRI and DAY. So F corresponds to D, R corresponds to A, I corresponds to Y. Okay, so R and A, let's check. R and A, they correspond. So this is correct. This is true. But the question is, we will find the false statement here. How about letter B? Angle Y and angle I. Okay, they are also corresponding angles. That's correct. How about letter C? Side FD. FD. Okay, so FD can never be happen or can never happen, my dear math learners, because D is in the part of another triangle. So already we have um, identified the wrong statement here, and that is letter C. Let's check whether we are correct. All right, we are correct, my dear math learners. Easy, right? So now let us go to the next problem. A 20-foot lamp post casts a shadow of 15 feet. 20-foot lamp, okay, and then 15 feet. Okay, like this. A nearby guard tower casts a shadow of 30 feet. So this is the one. Okay, so this is the shadow, 30 feet. This is unknown. How high is the guard tower to the lamppost? Okay. 10 feet, 30 feet, 20 feet, or 40 feet. Okay, so how do we get this, my dear math learners? So let's consider first our first given. So we have 20 foot lamp and 15 feet shadow. So 20 over 15. So, if we get the scale factor of 20 over 15, that would be 4 over 3. Okay. So, going to our next given, that would be 30, the shadow. And here is the tower or the height of the tower. So, therefore, um, we already know that that is 4 over 3, right? Or 4 over 3 as the scale factor. So, 30 is a factor of 3. So, therefore, we can already know that this one will be 40. Okay, because 4, 40 over 30 also gives us the scale factor of 4 over 3. So, our answer here is letter D. Okay, we got the correct answer, my dear math learners. Now, let's go to the next question. Our 6,000 square meter triangle, ancestral lot, okay, so this is the one. All right. Is divided by a perpendicular pathway. This is the, okay, pathway perpendicular to the to this side where the lot area of the house this one is bigger than is bigger is the bigger triangle and the smaller triangle is the garden okay is the triangular garden and the house lot area is similar to the ancestral lot question is how okay is it a yes by triangle angle by sector by sector B yes by AAA similarity theorem C yes by right triangle similarity theorem or letter D no not enough information my dear math learners if you can remember this is one of the uh, topics in your quarter 3 and this is an example of basically uh, a bigger right triangle and then drawn with a um, with a line 
perpendicular to the hypotenuse and that is an example on the topic of the right triangle similarity theorem so that is letter c okay we are correct my dear math learners so now let us go to the next problem the base of a tree is 20 feet from the bottom of a 39 feet building or 39 foot building the tree is shorter than the building of course at a certain time the shadows and at the same point 50 feet from the base of the building how tall is the tree okay so is it a 58.50 feet b 38.46 feet c 25.38 feet or letter d 23.40 feet okay my dear math learners it is good in this problem to make a drawing for your situation so let's try to draw a certain um, tree and a certain building like this okay so as you can see here this is our building 39 foot building and this is our tree so the distance between this tree is 20 feet okay so it says here the base of the tree is 20 feet from the bottom of the building so this is 20 feet my dear math learners okay now at a certain time their shadows end up at the same point and that is 50 feet from the base of the building okay so this will be 50 feet so you already have 20 feet here so therefore this distance from this point the shadow casted by the tree is 30 feet so that would be 30 feet our unknown is the height of the tree okay so that will be very easy my dear math learners by using the um, similarity theorem in which we can pair the height over shadow and then the height over shadow so the height of the tree is x and its shadow is 30 feet okay by subtracting 50 minus 20 so x over 30 and then this one 39 over 50 so by cross multiplication my dear math learners first you have the first proportion that is x over 30 okay x over 30 and then here okay and then here we have 39 over 50 so 50 and x will be multiplied with each other so that gives you 50x and then 39 times 30 that also give you another number and then if you divide that one the answer would be 23.40 okay we are correct my dear math learners all right so now let us go to the next question. I hope you got that one. Now, if you are hesitant to know that whether we are correct, you can solve it on your paper. All right. All right. We are already finished with our um, reviewer series for the whole four part of this preparation for examination in the third quarter my dear math learner i hope you have finished reviewing from the part one down to the part four and i'm sure if you do listen to our discussion and try to answer the questions given in this reviewer series i'm sure you will have flying colors in solving questions on your examinations this is still your free access youtube edu creator math teacher ash and always remember it is fun to learn mathematics if we are together learning thank you so much god bless and keep safe always <laughs>